y'all took this assignment, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't want to take it. Okay? On the use of force. Because I sit on the unit just like you do. And some of you have talked to me and I said, you know, something wrong. Okay? But that's because we don't know. Okay? And because we don't know is why I decided to go ahead and do this. Right now, uh, Mr. Brick is going to come and tell you a little bit about himself, give you a little bit of his background, and the other staff will follow right behind him. And you'll find out who I am if you don't already know. Mr. Brick. My name is Gerald Brick. I'm an eight year employee here at the Defense Team Center. <laughs> what unit? Foil. My name is Ralph Smith. I've been here eight years on 4G. I will be presenting uh, residents excuse me, <coughs> DCFS mandated report. Uh, good morning again, gentlemen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mr. Hurst. I've been working at the detention center uh, since 1975. And um, we're going to complete the uh, previous procedure as it relates to um, DCFS mandatory reporting, uh, DCFS hotline, and uh, I hope that when we get a chance to do that today, that we can get into some of the issues, some real life issues. Because I didn't, I didn't really understand that <coughs> you had actually had an incident, you know, that when you were involved in DCFS, <coughs> okay. and that's that's some good information. That I, I mean, I've never had any experience with it. You know, you know what I'm saying. And uh, like this, like this uh, as adjunct trainers, we are new at this, and we need to learn a lot too about what's going on. I mean, actual experience is very important. So uh, I hope to be able to continue to be in the training. Good luck on the job. Okay. Again, my name is David Person. For those who don't know, they call me Mr. Person. I'm probably the only person in the building with that last name. Okay, I work on Unit 4C. I've worked on different other units since I've been here for three years. Uh, they'll tell you about me. I'm a no-sense type of attendant. I don't take it, and I don't go for it. And I don't have it. I have my own martial arts school located on the south side, 57th University. I've been teaching for almost 10 years. I don't worry about any situation or how many group violence break out. As long as I follow proper policies and procedures, you can do any job in any given situation as long as you remain professional. Right now, we need to get some ground rules. One, no unnecessary questions. And what do I mean by unnecessary questions? We're talking about respecting each other. Okay? You got them over here. I just broke one of the rules. I'm sorry, I wasn't on time. Okay? Um, due to circumstances, sometimes that happens. Next thing, feel free to ask any questions that you want to. It's okay. We're not going to bite your heads and we want to know what's going on. Because we're only four attendants out of over 200 that have different concerns and different problems. But most of us run into the same basic problems. Okay. And may I interject one thing? While the tape is running, the tape is for <laughs> the trainers, okay? <laughs> right. It's all they right. Would, they would have showed us how we look. Okay. okay. Right. Uh, we'll be glad to turn it off if anyone wants Right. The use of force was a subject that I did not want to get into. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Because I train in the use of force. And I don't train people to become. I don't train them to do that. I don't train them to be subtle, okay? But you have to be in this building. The ability that you have as individuals will constitute how you deal with each resident, each staff member, each supervisor, and each administrator. Your professional ability comes directly from you. Nobody can teach you that. Nobody can give you that. That's you. That's your personality, okay? I would like to welcome you to <clears throat> procedures for restraint and report writing. Okay? I need to ask a question to you guys, and I'm going to ask them, and then you can give me some answers on it. First of all, I want to know how important is this class to you, 
What do you expect to get out of it? Anybody? I heard you cons expressing your concerns earlier. Well, I tell you, when it comes to the... Uh, that's report writing, okay? Sometimes, like I was talking about that one incident, they want you, they had me write like three reports. And I'm basically just telling them the same thing over and over again. Now I'm like, are they trying to catch me in a lie? They're trying to cross me up? You know, well, is there one procedure for this? Do you, like, does DCF, DCFS require a report and the administrator require a report? Or, you know, because. I don't think that's been clearly spelled out. <coughs> it just kept coming back up. In this block of instruction, we're going to cover that. Okay. Each instructor will get in <coughs> very specific details on how to do, what to do, and how to follow up. <coughs> I expect to get as much training and information out of this class as possible, as long as you all keep it real. Okay. That's a good question. Keep it real. Brother, everybody in the building tell you I'm real. And I don't bite my tongue. I don't care if a supervisor is standing there or an administrator. So when I say real, I'm really made it realistically real based on the reality out there. On the reality. There you go. Based on the reality. A reality that's on the floor. Nobody can tell you about this use of force other than somebody that's on the floor. That's why I decided to do this. I'm going to tell you. He asked me to. I said, no. My asked me to do it. You know who came and got me to do it? Mr. Kraft came and sat down and said, you know what person? You'd be good at this. I'm saying, no, nah, I'm not going to do this. Because, see, I'm like, y'all, I'm going to bag you just like you're going to bag me. And if anybody's ever worked with me, they'll tell you. Yeah, I'm not going to miss a beat. And it's got to be real. Okay? In this room, we probably have a lot of people that have various backgrounds. How many of you have had self-defense training, military, prior military experience, work with kids on the street? in a controlled and outside environment. How I many? And a lot of you got. Tell me about where well, you from the military. Tell me about some of the things you did in the military. You had to deal with people then. Yeah, well, you just, uh, they, you got a lot of training on uh, use of force, uh, how to, you know, pre different pressure points that you don't know how to use, they can kill you. Uh, this is what they like. Anybody else, some, somebody that's worked with kids outside on the street? <coughs> Yeah, I coach baseball. Coach Little baseball. League baseball. Okay. All types of individuals. All types. There Some have criminal backgrounds, but the athletes too. The athletes, very good. Who's worked with kids in an environment just like this, but not in this particular building? Yeah, we. I was a group work counselor and a child care worker. And I feel that the basic thing is a respect. Having discipline, having structure. If you give kids structure, discipline, and you know, teach them how to respect, you know, let them know you're gonna respect them. That's important. But when it comes to, you know, uh, when they go past that threshold of that that point of no return, when they get angry and they come at you, I came to you know, you gotta protect yourself. Okay. You know, and then that's that's you know, I, I, mean, it's, I don't think anyone here is is about trying to hurt a kid. You know, we're here because we care. You know, most of, the, most of the people here, you know, are here because they care. It's, it's about, like you say, it's, we're ignorant. A lot of things we don't know, you know, about. I think we primarily know the initial things about, uh, you know, the pr 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 procedures and, uh, and policies. But a lot of things we're not told. You know, after the initial things, we're not told a lot of stuff. Yet. Okay. What will happen if, you know. My point in asking you that question is very good. You made that point that I was trying to get to see. It's discipline. But the discipline does not come from the children. It does not come from the residents. The discipline comes from you. Your self-discipline is where it comes from. Because you cannot allow yourself to become like that resident. Personal, professional, and always professional. This is a job. I understand sitting up there, Mr. Doyle told some of you during your interview that he does not hire you or want you to fail. He's hiring you to succeed in your job or whatever it is that you're doing here in this building, whether you're a caseworker, so I can't get you guys out of there, you know, because y'all got to work with us. To an attendant, to an administrator, to a supervisor, to a cook, <coughs> rec personnel. You have to have that self-discipline to maintain the structure and to also follow the proper policies and procedures. And you're going to hear me say that word policy, procedure, all day long. 
You're going to hear these other guys stand up and they're going to say, policy and procedure, policy and procedure. And you say, you know, who's that said, it ties my hands? I heard that. Which one of you guys said that? <coughs> it ties my hands. Yeah, you got one hand behind your back and you got one hand free. And don't tie both hands. That's what we got to realize. And I didn't realize this until I started studying this. Yes, it ties one hand, but it doesn't tie the other. You heard the phrase, the right hand don't know what the left hand doing. That's exactly it. Okay? When that self-discipline is there, you will follow proper policies and procedures. You won't even have a choice in it. That discipline for that baseball and the teaching all those type of kids, convicts or fried juveniles or good kids that come from the sunny side of the street, it still takes that self-discipline for you to display in front of them, to make it all happen, and to make them follow the rules and regulations of this facility. In your controlled environments that you worked in other prior facilities, it still took that same self-discipline for you. Okay? It did. I'm going to say this. If you've never worked with kids in book, anywhere before, you worked in a McDonald's or a, a church building or you worked in a gas station or you worked for a technical firm, you still had to get up every day, go to that job, deal with that because of two things. One, you needed a job. <coughs> two, you got to pay the bills. And sometimes you even go to a job because you really just like going. <clears throat> now those are good things very good things and I'm going to keep it real alright I'm going to keep it real right now I put some dictionaries in front of you I need you guys to help me out here a little bit I need somebody to look up the word anger somebody to look up the word violence somebody to look up the word self control Anger. <laughs> 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 it's this man the question. I don't make the volunteer you to do it. I guess you have to do it. I got all the other I got the other one. 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 I got angle. 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 I got let me tell you something. Department of Children and Family Service. Okay? Doing those words scare a whole lot of people, don't they? Especially in this building, huh? <laughs> but what we do, no, I mean, don't feel ashamed. It scared me too. It scared me before I started researching this class and understanding what was going on. Department of Children and Family Service. Scared yeah, the heck out of me because people told me some things when I first walked in this door about DCFS. And I would not have believed. And you know the strange thing about it? I used to work for DCFS and I said, I never heard that. <laughs> okay? It's scary. All right. First word anger. Read the definition. Uh, <laughs> All it says is affliction, anger, grief. About it. Mm. Feeling, feeling of displeasure. <coughs> feeling of displeasure. Okay. Displeasure. That's a little bit more than that, you know. Feeling of displeasure. Anger. Here we go. He said a feeling. A strong feeling of displeasure. <coughs> Resentment or hostility. See? Anger. Which some of us have when we're on those units. When a kid and got in your face 
and it told you he ain't gonna sit down, he ain't listen to what you say, he, excuse me ladies for this word I'm getting ready to say, he gonna call you a motherfucker. Yeah, it's real. It happens. He gonna call it to you, right? And then he probably gonna call you something else. Especially if he know you from the street, he might call you a hype. Because <laughs> he was seeing you on the stroke. But see, you still have to remain professional. You have to. And it starts with going back to that self-discipline. You got to. <clears throat> because in here, you become a whole totally different person. What you are out there and are in here are two different things. And each one of you, I'm going to tell you, I would never judge you on what you do out there. Because I don't know you out there. I know you from in here. And if I know you're doing your job and you're following the proper policies and procedures, man, you will never have a problem. Administration will never have a problem with you. Next word. Violence. Who's got it? I got it. Uh, physical force used so as to injure, damage, or destroy. Extreme roughness of action. <coughs> intense, awesome, devastatingly or explosive. Believe powerful force or energy as of a hurricane or volcano, unjust or callous use of force or power as in violating another's rights, sensibilities. Oh, oh that's enough. You ain't got to do that. <laughs> you ain't got to, we don't want all that because you said everything I want you to say. You said physical force exerted, right? As to change, damage, abuse, injure, an instance of violent act or behavior. We all know that these kids have violent acts and they have violent behaviors, most of them. But then, do we have attendants that have those same acts? Yeah. Mm. So is that professional? And it's definitely not, follow, not following proper policies and procedures. If you're allowing that to happen to you. Self-control, who's got it? Control of one's emotions, desires, or actions. Okay. Control, emotions, desires, actions. They just summed up the other two I just gave you. Anger and violence, right? It's part of what? It's part of the emotional deal. An emotional deal that you, as an individual, have to determine how to put a rain on. And it all starts with remaining professional. It all starts with understanding policies and procedures. It starts right there. Okay? So I'm telling you, this class changed me because, see, I was, I was a rump shaker. And I was, and I was taught by a rump shaker. Boy, get out of hand is all you got to do. Word, get around, you never have another problem. How many people heard that? <laughs> Am I right or wrong, eh? No shame, man. Really. That's right. And I'm going to tell you, they saw me come, they sat down. And I'm not a big guy. <coughs> Matter of fact, most of y'all ain't even bigger than I am. I don't lift weights. I don't do none of that. But I get them right here. Right there. I deal with that self-control. So I can control them. And I control the whole group. How many of y'all sit on the unit by yourselves, <coughs> units you've never been on, and the boys come up to you and ask you 50,000 questions, can I get this, can I get that, can I go over here and do this, and they don't know that you've been here a while, because they think you're New Jack. I got a lot of New Jacks in here, right? And you know you get the New Jack syndrome, Well, they want to take advantage of you. Well, he don't know no better, so I'm going to get it. See, he don't know what the rules are over here, so I'm going to say, I'm kissing boy for the day. Right? That's happened. And all of a sudden, the old tenants come in. You know you're supposed to, not supposed to be out there. You come to 4C, the boys won't act like that. They'll tell you a whole different ballgame. They said, no, because see, there is a consequence that they have to pay whether or not we're there or not when we come back. And they know that. And if you worked on 4C with me at any given time and I left or the staff up there has left, they'll tell you. Those boys would do exactly what they were doing even when we weren't there. Because they know if I look in that book, 
or if you tell me in the hallway that they did such and such a thing, I'm not going to ask them whether or not they did. Because I'm trusting your professional attitude and ability. And I'm going to deal with them right off the top. And they know that. Especially when you got some long time ago over there. It's been there six months, five months, a year. Some of you may have some other units that's been three years. Everybody here remember Lorenzo Johnson that has been here long now? That was here for five years. Lorenzo was a model resident. Unless he could be slick on the new jacket. But he was slick just so much. Okay? And it happens. It comes with the territory. I'm sorry. That's the free hand. And that's the hand tied behind the back. The policy is that can't do that, but the free hand said, huh. That's what I'm talking about. Violence, anger, self control, <laughs> DCFS, all run hand in hand. They all run hand in hand. Okay? Anybody does not understand those things? All right. Today we're going to cover. Four topics. The topics of today will be the use of force, the use of force and mechanical restraints, uh, resident abuse, DCFS mandate <coughs> orders, and grievance procedures. Each individual instructor will talk to you about each different topic. <coughs> At any given time, if you have a question, feel free to ask. Feel free to express your concerns. Now, let's not take hypotheticals instantly. Well, I heard what well, you know they were talking about. We don't want to get into that. Want to know why? Because that's something somebody told you that you didn't experience for yourself. <coughs> if you've experienced it for yourself and you know exactly what it felt like, you know exactly what you went through, that's what we want to hear about. Because then you know what you were in. You know exactly what you were in. And we need to know what procedure did you follow. Okay, we need to know that. Now, if you, just like you said, if you feel you don't want it to go on camera, let me know, kind of do like this. You know, and I, I'll do like this. And we'll cut the camera off. All right? I, I'm telling you, I ain't no problem with it. So if you, and, I, and right now, I want you to feel free with yourself, say it. You need to go to the bathroom, get you a cup of water, whatever. Do so. Do it quietly. Okay? And we will at certain times give you a chance to go and take care of some fun. <coughs> but right now, understanding the policies and procedures, where do they come from, <coughs> how do we find them, and who we ask about. Well, if you turn to page 58 in your booklet, 58, 58, you can find a referral sheet. That referral sheet should say the Illinois Statute for Detention Centers. And you notice there's a whole lot of referrals on that, huh? You probably look at that and say, ain't nowhere in the world I'm going to read all that. Well, actually, how many of y'all know where to go to find this stuff here in the building? Who knows? <laughs> I mean, give me somebody that's been working here a long time. You know where to go to find this stuff at? Probably. Got a library. <laughs> probably. You know that word? Probably. You mean, how many years? <laughs> I ain't going to tell. I just want to know. Hey, you be quiet. <laughs> Alright. Who else? Any any of the new guys? Do y'all know? Oh, there's still stuff right there. Yeah, you got an information desk at the door. No, that don't work. <laughs> I'm sorry, ain't no they give no information at that desk. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Where do you go? Go to conference room. Which one? One about old boy office. You don't want to say his name. Door. Door. <laughs> I said it. Just the door. That's where his office is. But see, how many of you guys know 
that you can go in that room at any given time, as long as there's no meeting going on, and read and view any book in there without having to ask anybody. They never told you that, did they? Why? <laughs> Why they never told you that? Why? Well, they say if you don't want somebody to know, you don't tell. Who don't want us to know? You don't want us to know. You crazy, man. You don't want you to know. Talking in a lot of aspects of something. Okay. You don't want you to know. <laughs> because you didn't ask. How do you know what to ask yeah. if you don't even have How to do you know what to ask? You know, you sit there and you go, hmm. What if? You walk in dog's office because you see some books. No, I didn't say dog's office. You don't even know where to even go. You don't even know the room exists. They never told us you said. If I'm not mistaken, Everybody punches in at a time clock upstairs, right? We slide our little cars through there. And every time when you slide that car, you walk down this little corridor. And through that little corridor, you always see this room open. This room is always open. Unless they're in there. How many people see that? It's nothing but a table and chair. It's nothing but a table and chair. That means nobody went in there and kind of looked in the room and saw what was there. Right. Right. So here's not a professional just to walk in someone's office. <laughs> yes, you go. But you know what? There's secretaries sitting right there. We pass those secretaries every day. That's, that's no one, one ever said, well, that's what keeps most of us from going in there. It was just true. It was true. You, it was true. You, you, look at right this, you look at this secretary and you say, do I really want to have what's in this office? She ain't going to tell me. She's probably going to tell me none of my business. But if they truly desire for us to know the information, they'll send a fly to everybody. Hey, no, we have the a reason room, why I can say the reason why I can say they really want you to know about that information is because they can't be got up. <coughs> That's why they said we need to let people know in a large amount that they can come in there because for years people didn't know where to go, not even what to look up. Look like a bunch of law books sitting in there on the shelf just collecting dust. Which they are laws. They're statutes. That every detention center that has juveniles has to follow. You are supposed to receive 40 hours of training a year. 40 hours of training a year. <coughs> this is part of your training. Because they looked up and said, they don't know where to go. How come my how come my attendants don't know the answer? How come they don't know where to go find something? And I'm telling you, I was like you. And so he came to say, person, you know you can go down there and hook it up, man. I'm like, I'm not going down there. Not you ain't gonna give me the sense. They'll tell you, David was sitting right there. I'm not gonna stand up there and lie to you. If it ain't right, I am not gonna speak on it. And if it's not realistic, it's not gonna come out of my mouth. <coughs> Because when I leave here, I go back up there and sit on the unit. And I'm just like you. I'm not getting paid anything extra for being here. I believe in this one block of instruction. That's why I'm standing before you. Okay? If you have any questions on what this information entails, <coughs> there are two people that you can come to that are always on duty. One is sitting over there in the, in the corner, Mr. Turner. Was a caseworker for years, an attendant. Now he's a training coordinator. There's also another place that you can go if you don't feel comfortable with going in that little room upstairs. You can come down here. You can come and you can go and ask them to let you see any book on any statute listed on that sheet or anything that you want to know about. In that room. Say if you get the statute and you open up and you don't understand. Well, that's what they're for. Mr. Turner and Myra, the lady that was standing here before you, killing time for me to get here. I can say she was killing it too. <laughs> I was into it. Okay? They are here to help you. To figure out what it is you need to figure out. How it is you need to find out any information you want. Especially if you run into these people. DCFS. Yeah, they come in with the ball whip and the chain. And then, you know, they got a, a sword slid down in their pants right here because, you know, they're ready to cut you up. And we all feel that we're guilty right off the bat, don't we? 
Anytime they say they talk about DCFS, we get that guilty look on our face. I'm guilty before proving it. Well, and we are. Especially if we don't follow proper policy and procedure and don't remain professional. Those things, remaining professional, policy and procedure. Okay? In that event, what do we want to get out of this course and what do we want to try to give to you? We want to try to give to you a couple of things. One, we want to eliminate fear. We want to remove the myths and the rumors that are going around this building about DCFS. So what are some of the rumors going around? That your name's going to get put on this list and you're not going to know about it. Yeah, you don't know about it if you don't know where to go find out. That's not a rumor, but that's a fact. Your name will be put on the list, right or wrong. Because the law states that's the proper policy and procedure. Now, the caseworkers are supposed to kind of enlighten you on that. But they don't, because they did not know that they're supposed to talk to you about that. Anytime that there's an incident with a resident, it is by law that it is reported, especially on any abuse, whatever type it may be. And yes, abuse has this big old broad definition, and yes, it depends on who they send over here that will interpret whether or not it is found or unfound. I'm sorry, this is not a perfect world. That one hand tied behind the back, that other one free, right? It says, well, he may read that law, you may read it. He will interpret it differently from you. It's two different individuals. But both of them must stay within a basic. Excuse me. Let me get up for a second. Slide out. I like to walk, so you know, I need some space. A basic guideline. Within that basic guideline, there is something that they must stay in. This big old circle over here says policy and procedure. You got X's and an X. If you're following proper policies and procedures, you write on the money, dead center. But then we got to be real, right? Oh, yeah. That one hand tied behind the back, that other one free. Boy, just spit in your face. <laughs> we finna talk about that, right? I don't know a caseworker ain't gonna let a boy spit in his face. He's not gonna get angry. Probably gonna get violent. Tell me about a woman when she get violent. Well, uh -huh. <laughs> see, see, they gonna keep quiet. See, I ain't heard no move. They both kept their head down. Like I don't wanna let nobody know. I got it in. <laughs> okay, but see, you on target. You know this is a big circle. I'm gonna get to the X's here in a minute. It's a big circle. That's policy and procedure all over there. That's what you want to stay within, even after that boy spit in your face. Yeah, right. I heard you. We hear it. But we're going to remove the fears. Because you do have an outlet. See, don't put it right there. See, I'm going to go back to it. I'm just going to go. All right, there we go. All right, what we want to do is increase your security. Now I'm not talking about the security upstairs on the floor and in the units. We're going to increase security by administration. I'm going back to that. Because the administration wants you to succeed. They want you to be able to do your job even after the boys spit in your face. Because, see, they want you to know, and some of you probably don't believe it, that they're going to back you. Now, I had this discussion, didn't we, Mr. Hurst? We had this discussion with administration. We was like, I'm not standing up here and telling y'all nothing. If I, if, I if I tell you guys that they're going to bag you up, and they don't. Because then who looks stupid? Me. I don't sign my name to nothing if I'm not sure about it. Same thing I do with my children. I promote it. My adults are promoted. When I put my name on that dotted line, they can go anywhere in the country, anywhere overseas, and they will recognize my signature because I travel all over the world competing. How can you speak for others? How can I speak for others? You know, they gave me that right. 
Is I mean, Mr. Person, in terms of in terms of knowing that that's the absolute that they're gonna back. This is it. I'm gonna get to that right now. <laughs> How they gonna back you? They gonna back you as long as you stay within this realm of policy and procedure. I didn't say how are they gonna back you. Uh -huh. I said how can you speak for them in terms of saying that that's the absolute that you absolutely know that they're gonna back you. You know what? If you do this, I guarantee they will absolutely back you. If you stay within this realm, they will absolutely back you up. Now, it may not seem like it at first. Okay, you notice you got an X over here that's kind of way up. Every one of us don't stay straight on the bulls out all the time. We don't do it. There's no attendant in this building that can. You can't show me one. And that right, Mr. You got that right, Mr. <laughs> You can't, you can't. You can't, you can't. So you're going to shift around this circle. You're going to shift it. But see, you're still, as long as you inside this circle and you shift to the edge of it a little bit, you're still on target. They still, they, let me tell you something. There will be some administrator in here that will back you because you want to know why? Every administrator has not been in attendance. Right, you say saying something. Okay, some of them have. So they don't understand what you're going through. <coughs> Every supervisor has not been in attendance. But people are too judgmental. But what did I say? You got one hand that's tied and one that ain't? What if the one that's tied is your strength hand? Okay. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> as long as I, as long, as long as I got, as long as I got, check it out, as long as I got the policy and procedures, there are no what ifs. There are none. Because it's in black and white. I don't care who interprets it. You can interpret it any way you want to. Because as long as I stay within these realms, they can't touch me. MC Hammer said it back. Can't touch this. You came up here and you shared the most valuable thing with me that I've heard in a long time about a room that I didn't even know existed with information that I have great desire to get involved with. Okay. But let, me, but, let me, but let me finish this though. But now, you got down here, you got this X that's way out here in left field. And let's talk about that boy that spit in your face and you beat him down and broke his jaw. <laughs> so let me tell you something. Now how you had, you think administration gonna back you when you, heard, when you heard a resident like that? We can't justify that. You bust this kid's nose and his nose broken in three different places. We can't justify that. Now, if he spit on you, and you had to subdue him, take him down, and control him, and he bumped his head on the wall, or accidentally hit the desk or something, administration can justify that. That's what your report going to say. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even thinking that. I'm saying it's all we stay within this realm. You know what I'm saying? I hate you. We're talking real. It's about all how you document. Which y'all gonna get into that? Cause these brothers are gonna tell you how to document. They gonna give you the information that I know you don't know. That I know you've never heard. People have been here for years haven't heard this information because. There was nobody here to give to. They did not have training coordinators or people. You learn from Mr. Rob. See, I came in when Mr. Rob was teaching training. And we had a whole week. And we learned everything in a nutshell in a week's time. And then they put you on the unit and said, go for what you know. And we, then you were lucky if you got with a good old timer that taught you the ropes and taught you how to write stuff down, how to cover your butt. You were lucky. And then you may have got one that just said, just go to sleep, son, it'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, you got something like that. It depends on who trains you. Yeah. Okay? You come in now, you're gun ho. You ready to get down when you get down? You want a job, you got it. I'm working for the county. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in. How many people said that? <laughs> Tell me they said that. I'm in. Then you got upstairs and said, this is a madhouse. I didn't know it was like this. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't know. Some of us did. All right? All right. Just like you were talking about, that feeling of comfort from administration. How am I going to, man, how they going? I don't believe it. 
You know what? I don't believe it either. But what I do believe, not even an individual in this building, I believe in what's written down. You face that. What's written down, they can't change. And if it's law, they can't make their own law. <coughs> they can't do it. So do not rely on an individual. Rely on your own self-discipline, right? Isn't that what that's all about? That following that procedure is you. It's you. And yes, like I said, you may stray to the other side. You may get a little angry, violent. You may lose that self-control. But as long as you don't lose it so far, there's still a chance to save you and keep you from dropping off the edge. Because we all get to the edge. I've gotten there since I've been here. In three years, I know you probably got in there too. Everybody just put jump. And it don't take it don't take much. Especially if you come home and your woman ain't gay, you know, loving, your dog died. You know, your car didn't stop. How many people love their cars? I see them out there. <laughs> For the county boy, you get a lot of money, don't you? I see a lot of brand new cars out there in parking lot. And baby, that baby sit on the bed. Rental uh, cars. Rental cars, man. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but see, all, all our stuff is in the street. You can't afford <laughs> to fall off the edge. Can you? <coughs> and everybody that's here, eventually, is going to get to that edge and going to want to snap. That's the word boys use, right? I ain't seen nobody snap yet. You got some neat trick if you can show me. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that comfort, that belief, that they can make it happen. But see, it's you that makes it happen. <coughs> because if you know what's, what you're facing, they can't give you no shuck and jive back. They can't give it to you. Mm -hmm. At least they ain't giving it to me and I can read. If we have anybody that has any Mental imperatives. Don't feel ashamed if you can't read. I tell a kid in a minute, if you can't read, there's no shame. I'll read it for you. If any adult up here can't read, whisper in my ear, I never tell anybody. You come with me, we we'll go down and I'll read it for you. If you don't feel comfortable with going to Mr. Turner, Mr. Uh, uh, Tamayo, you don't feel comfortable going to the doors off, I'm on four C's. You got four F, four E, and what is Mr. Hurst for? I'm 4G, Hurst 4A. 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 Okay. Call us. If we don't know right now, and you have a question, we're going to find the answer. Especially if it's in black and white. You know that, that stuff that ain't written down, and people go around hollering and say, well, that's policy. It is not policy for DCF to come in here and scope your life, and you ain't did nothing wrong. It's not policy. Now, they may, it may be a procedure in the building that that happens. That's because somebody's not following the proper procedure. But you, now that you're going to learn about it and know about it, you don't let it happen. Don't let them do you any kind of way. Okay? That's why administration said we got to let our employees know that we got them. We got their back. It's not going to be an easy road. But we got their back. And as long as they didn't fall off the edge, it's a done deal. Now, you're probably going to have a question, well, what about that list? Where's it going to go? Well, how long is my name going to stay on it? Who do I get to talk to about it? How do I find out about it? These guys are going to tell you all that. <clears throat> They're going to tell you exactly where to go, what to do, and how to find out about it. And if they don't, I'm going to be sitting over here in the corner with my little book going through. You got that question. got that answer. Here you go. I'm going to be working on it. So I'm going to be working right along as the presentation is going on. Okay. Now, got one couple more things to cover. But right now, I want you guys to get up for a minute. Go get you some of the water, use the bathroom. Then we cover this again in a second. Y'all just say, man, don't know, by the way. Mr. Turner, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, you remember what you told me about the certificate? Don't even worry. You know, <laughs> but you know what? I wasn't professional because I forgot what I was working at. <laughs> See, when you're around here and you're professional, you get to eat while it's there because it's going to be gone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, especially free donuts. So, y'all owe me a donut here. Who's going to cough it up? Give it up. Uh, I saw most of the staff. Look, there's two or three. I'm going to saw most of two or three. Yeah, the staff, they had two or three. Staff. Yeah, training staff had two or three, honestly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, okay, where the rules are getting? All right. All right. I know right now I've, I've talked about a lot of things, and you probably don't remember the first thing that I said when I walked in here. But remember, but remember <laughs> self-discipline, policies and procedures, and remain a professional is all you got to do. <laughs> <coughs> that, can I ask a question though? Is that realistic though? I mean, I mean maybe 95% of the time, but you know that is. Well, see, didn't I say? I did say that, didn't I? Yeah, it's not. One hand got the other, right? Yeah, right, yeah. left, one behind the back, one up. So, I'll, now we know the one behind our back is the positive procedure, right? Everybody assume that I hope you I hope you get that or something that this is the body that's gonna only get you tied. This is the one kind of shift all around the place. Because you can't do that. There's no way that you can stay one hundred percent on the mark at all times. If you do, I don't want to work here. Because you definitely ain't real. But if you act professional, you're gonna get a low rate. That's all right. You're not here you're not here about your rate. I mean, you know, you're your evaluation. You. Yeah, for you. <coughs> that evaluation is a piece of paper. And I'm sorry. I ain't seen it get nobody no promotion, so I'm like. <laughs> so I'm just saying, they, you know, they say they want you to act professional and this and that, but you look around and you got a lot of characters. Okay. But he may decide to laugh. He may decide to be a teacher. He, I may decide to just be a drill sergeant. You got three different people, but they all are remaining professional in their own individual way. He may have better control over his unit by keeping them live. To you, that may seem disruptive. Man, how you handle that? I can't stand that. He never has any problems. On the other hand, they probably can't see how I got these boys marching down the hallway, standing with their face and feet together. So it wouldn't part everything. How the boy take it? And you'll probably hear the boys tease and say, they get treated over there on 4C, boy, look at that. And they'll say, but that works for me. It depends on what works. Some, some attendants play cards with them and, you know, get into the groove with them. That's not, not being professional. That's their way of their own self-discipline. They chose to deal with the residents on their level to make sure that they maintain the unit. There's not one unit up there that runs exactly like the next. And I hear people say that it should. It can never be. It will never be. Because you don't have the same people on every unit. And that's why I said, if you was 100% all the time, but I'm leaving this guy, I don't want it. <clears throat> because I can't be me. I don't want to dress, look, eat, sleep, walk, and talk like nobody else. Nobody else. Get back on that note, though. I don't know. Here we go. Anybody have any questions with eliminating fear, security, <laughs> and the comfort that we just covered before you guys? <laughs> yes. Question I asked you. About the boy spitting in your face? Oh, I'm finna get into that one. I put it out there and it's been on a lot of people's mind. Oh, yeah. It's a good one. Yes, you have had some residents to spit in attendance face. I'd be considering spitting in supervisor's face. What does that mean? It mean kick ass time, huh? Nah. Can't do that. <laughs> All right. Get to that. That's going to bring us into the topic that I know you guys were covering before I came into class. And that's understanding administration's reaction to violence. 
He's over here. Understanding reaction to violence. And you notice that word administration. If you don't see it on this wall, there's one back there on that wall. At no time, at no time, Brother Johnson, you slide over the Are you allowed to get angry, to have violence, and to lose your self control? What you mean? No, you can't. At no time are you allowed to get angry, become violent, or lose your self control. I've heard somebody say, well, because I can't do that, I ain't stopping the boys from fighting because I'm going to get in trouble. I ain't getting into it. That's one way out. Sounds like a good one to me. <coughs> Sounds like abstinence, don't it? Yeah, right. <coughs> ain't nobody want to laugh about abstinence, right, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody got no kids in here? <laughs> That's all right. I thought we was real. See, now the brothers don't want to get real. Man, <laughs> boy, he he gets real. Real. No, that's it. Nobody want to get real now, huh? But that ain't everybody brothers don't. <laughs> you can't. You're not allowed to. I didn't say you couldn't get verbal, forceful. But you cannot be violent or angry or lose your self-control. You cannot hit, kick, or punch a resident. <coughs> you okay. cannot hit, kick, or punch a resident. Under any circumstance. Under any circumstance. Not one circumstance can you do that. Because if you do that, you have just lost your self-control. And when you lose your self-control, you're going to become... Violent, definitely angry, but then we got another word down here, fear. If you can't see this on the walls, folks are left, right, and back. Fear. Did you have a question? Yeah, I mean, so you're saying there's nothing such as self-contained anger? I mean, you know what? You cannot be angry. You know what? You know what? <laughs> I'm not going to say that it can't be self-contained, but what happens when you self-contain anger? There you go. Now, here it is. Johnny Smoke just spit in your face. Calls you a motherfucker. Said you was a hyper. He sold you a rock last week on the street before you got locked up. Finna tell all the residents in the room about it. Finna tell the administration and get you in trouble. First of all, the boy spit in your face. That's just a no-no. I'm, excuse me. Until I started to understand. And see, those were the old timers got me like that. They took me there. No, this is what you do. Okay? But they weren't wrong. They were absolutely right. But they were wrong in how they did, not what they were doing. They were absolutely right in what they were doing. <coughs> they were just doing it. <laughs> in the wrong way. You cannot hit, kick, or punch violence, anger, or fear. What do you mean fear? We got some attendants up there that are scared. <laughs> and I'm telling you, if you was here three years ago when all the boys were this big and they were that big, you remember? They were that big, you had everybody to be scared. Because we were fighting mother. We was in the every, every week. We was in the hallway tussling. Who they called? Then they called me from the fifth floor. I was on the fifth floor. They called me first and get down to the fourth floor. Because we was like that. <coughs> we still are. But we got a lot of people that say, I'm not going to do it. I ain't nothing. Uh -uh. I ain't getting in no trouble. So, Brother Jones can't call the man to his left or his right. Because he don't want to get into, he don't want to get involved. That's not what we're trying to tell you. We're trying to tell you we want you to get involved. We don't need a reactionary team. You want to know why? Because you all are already that team. 
Because if you have your individual unit under control, one man can run that unit for 10 men by himself. And it takes approximately <coughs> two and a half minutes to get anywhere in the building. Two and a half minutes to get anywhere in the building from an elevator. You can travel the whole floor. And we talking about getting from the fourth floor to the fifth floor, going all the way over to 5H, to which is the furthest unit. Two minutes. I get a half of the elevator. You know how slow it is. You like to get a little bounce. <laughs> you like to get another half of the elevator. You know, you know, you got to get a little bounce. So we kind of kind of move slow because of the elevator. <coughs> but you can't hit, kick, or punch or have fear. Why? Because in each given time, fear will give a result of hitting, kick, or punching. <coughs> fear will make you do it. I'm sorry. You get scared of two or three residents, you in that television room, and they say something before you know it, boom, you can hear them. They bleed. Caseworker answered to the job. What happened? The city hit me in the face. He ain't gonna say he spit on you. Not unless he got hard one of them hard court brothers. Yeah, I spit on him and he hit me. I still want to file charges. Wanna know why? Because you ain't supposed to hit him. But because he spit on you, it caused you to have that buildup. You might have been afraid of. Which now that fear is built up, <coughs> the anger is built up. You didn't got two things, and trust me, it takes two things to cause you to hit, kick a punch on that. You don't have just one. It takes two, two emotions, two emotions. You can't have one emotion to make another one happen. Okay. Jealousy is only fear. Okay. And anxiety. Nobody ever told you that, huh? Fear and anxiety. Fear to lose a person, and that anxiety because you want to be with him. So it becomes jealous. He got my man. <laughs> you know what I said? He got my man. Right? Because you got something in here like that. Alright? Now, you cannot allow two emotions to take over you. <coughs> because if you do, you're going to mess up. Now, that's that. This is, the, this is the part that goes all over the place. Yeah, I messed up a little boy spit in my face. I reacted. I do never use the word punch. If they didn't tell you, don't use that word. In case words do you tell brothers and sisters around here, the word not to use. <laughs> because you have to have people that write down in front. Well, I punched them. <laughs> 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 Alright? Don't use that word. That word. <laughs> but see, this is why I say that reactionary group, because see, they got to let you know there's certain buzzwords you don't use. I'm not going to get into that because that's a whole different class, <laughs> but don't ever punch a resident. Don't ever kick one. Now I'm going to tell you the group I get into all the time. Mr. Person, you're a martial artist. You travel all over the country. You do this, you do that. You're not going to be upstairs punching and kicking them, are you? First thing they did when I was in the interview, they told me, well, you're not going to be punching and kicking on them, are you? Why do they think everybody that studies the martial arts is going to be punching and kicking on somebody? <laughs> they see it in the movie. It's on TV. That's the popular thing that's going on. They don't show you the mentals and stuff that go along with the art. They show you brick breaking and dough kicking and beating the bad guy up. Beating the good guy up. You know, be, yeah, beating the good guy up too. <laughs> they don't tell you about the self-discipline that goes with that. You have a lot of instructors that don't even teach that anymore. Because truly, it takes a long time to learn self-discipline. But see, you don't have that affordability. You don't have that kind of time to study somebody's discipline for umpteen years. You came through the door with some form of self-discipline. 
that will help you stay out of it in <coughs> kick, kick and punching mode. Now, you notice if you look on this chart <coughs> that I got a circle. It doesn't have an X in it, and it's green. What's the green light on the street mean? Go. Ah, that's the go sign, ain't it? Oh, yeah. Now we finna get into the dude spitting in my face. Okay? If you turn to page 65 in your book, you will see the national standards of the ACC. ACA, I'm sorry. See, I'm talking about ACC. I can see my way how to get it, but. Okay? <clears throat> the ACA, the American Correctional Association, is who we are governed by. Who the heck is the ACA? Has anybody heard about that before today? Yes, yesterday. You heard about it yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't heard about it before yesterday. Okay? But well, see, the case workers know a whole lot, they ain't shit. See? And you got some, I'm a token man, you got some? Hey, cut that camera off. Other side. You know. Alright? All I'm saying is that they are good research people on information. But then your question was, my brother, they want to keep it real. How do you know what to ask if you don't know? You will never know unless you get into the situation <coughs> or in, into any incident that will cause you to research your own well-being. If you go through this job and never get any problems, never had any problems, you don't have to ask any questions. You just come to work, do your job, go home. Okay? But you still should know. That's one of the reasons why we can't all get together. Because we don't know if they're right. We don't know. We don't know what it is to get together because everybody feel well. I got my job. That's all I'm concerned about. Got to put everybody on the same sheet of music. Now, if we're on the same sheet of music, does that mean we all gonna play the same note? No. Nope. I don't play the note as as Hall. <laughs> Hall got his own kind of notes, but we all on the same sheet of music. He likes Beethoven. <coughs> I like my jazz. It's all music. Hitting, kicking, punching, anger, violence. I know notes. So if a boy spits in your face, the answer is no. You cannot hurt that resident. You cannot allow yourself to get angry where you lose your self-control. You cannot fix it where these ladies and gentlemen that are case workers are not going to do their job. They cannot help you if you step out of the boundaries of proper policies and procedures, <coughs> no matter what your personal feelings are. No matter what. And you probably saying, fuck that. <laughs> Kicking his ass. <laughs> Spill me, he might have AIDS. Might have TB. We don't know none of that, do no. when they come up there. No, we don't know none of that. <laughs> but you know what? We knew what kind of job we would take in our own individual minds, what the risks were going to be in our own little individual minds. We knew we wouldn't come to a day camp. Am I right or wrong? All right. Oh, see, no, brother, they, they don't want to keep it real. See, they don't want to keep it real. Yeah, I don't know. I thought it might be real. All right. They ain't no day camp. Yeah, but we also didn't think they were going to put kids with tuberculosis on the section of the right, but, right. but you know what, though? If you work with kids on the street, you get the same thing. Not all in one little section, right? You know, you don't know. You don't know. That's just it, but if they do, you know. But see, you don't know. They don't put them on the section if they have tuberculosis. Now, I got, two boys over here. Well, hey, I got a question over here. I got a question, excuse me. I have a question. What's the potential? Here we go. Look at the ACA. The ACA is the American Correctional Association. Okay? Now, you know what the ACA is? Yeah. 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 Ye
be given to you in more detail what you can do. Now I'm going back to my chart, and Mr. Bridges is going to cover that here in a minute. Physical handling of children. Yes, you can physically handle a resident as long as you're following proper policy and procedure. You can protect yourself. This is the way you can protect yourself. No, we're not telling you to stand on a unit and let somebody hit you, let somebody abuse you verbally, mentally. No, no, no. If you do, you don't need to be here. I didn't say you had to believe in what you're doing. I'm saying you have to believe in yourself, and you have to be able to follow the proper procedure. At no time am I going to tell you to stand up and say, let a kid spit on you. Oh, no. But I'm telling you to be careful that it's going to happen and that it may happen. At no time am I telling you to let a resident hit you. I've been hit since I've been here. What did you do? I restrain. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, it gave me the real. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm real. Why I'm saying, why I'm saying, why I'm saying I'm <laughs> because I had a good co-worker that would not let me step off that edge. And this co-worker been here a lot of years, been here 15 years. That's the only reason, right? And but you know what though? That's what we here for. He told me to keep it real. Alright. I actually had my lens was scratched because of that hit. And that's a very painful. Anybody ever had a paper cut across the eyeball? Mm. Mm. Ain't nothing nice. And it may not seem a lot, and it didn't bleed. But it, it's, the, it, it's painful. Okay? But it took a good co-worker to keep me from crossing out that circle. And after that, I had to look at the kid, and I got to. I had to realize that hey, this is a child. He was already <laughs> fighting long before he knew me. He's not going to change his mannerism because of me. If he has a history of doing this, no matter where he went, what do I do? I remain professional. I still fed the kid, gave him a shower, did all the things like he had done nothing. The kid apologized to me, and I couldn't believe it because they, from what I heard, he never apologized to nobody. That's from what I heard. Yes, I wanted to step outside that circle. We all need each other. That safety net. If you, 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 and all you step out of hand. Hopefully one of us will be able to step in between and say, that's enough. Walk away. Let me deal with it because I'm not angry. That's that bottled up. It'll get you. It'll eat you up. Now, does this thing, are the residents going to think that you're a punk? You're scared? Probably. Probably. <coughs> You have nothing to prove to them other than that you are professional and you can deal with them without hitting, kicking, or punching. Now, let's talk about that. Yes. I said one thing about that. You know, the, the kids are getting in case, but sometimes you don't worry about the kids. Sometimes it just appears in the court and you hear it from the court. We do. And I've heard it before. I mean, it hasn't happened to me, but uh, from what I've heard from you know, the I'm going to give you another example. The brother on five feet, man, he, he's scared. He got no heart. I ain't talking about you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> he got no heart. Man, he let the kids run over him, do whatever he want to do. Don't y'all hear that? Oh, see, ain't nobody keep yeah, it real. Ain't nobody yeah, keep it real. Y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. hear that? Y'all hear that? All right. Just because this person decides not to gladiate doesn't make him weak. Right. He's not here for that. We're not here for that. We're not going to tell you to do that. <coughs> now, I'm not going to say that when yourself and other residents are in danger, that you're not going to have to get a little 
physical. That's why that hand, that circle is open. Because you're going to have to. You're going to have to get physical. But when at a point did you get physical? What does the law say? Does it say that I'm wrong if I do it? Does it say that I'm right? It says that you have the ability to do. Okay? Just the physical. Handling of it. So what is the appropriate use? How can I physically handle somebody? And what is the appropriate use of force? In any given situation, you follow simply three simple situations. Yes? Before you get into that, um, it says when you're in danger, when the person is <coughs> in danger or property. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Now, somebody spitting in your face is not necessarily a personal danger. Somebody in your face cussing you, swearing to you right in your face is not definitely a physical danger. Right. Where, where can you draw the line to it? Because if, if somebody's in my face like that, I would probably put my hands on them. I'd never hit a kid and I won't hit a kid. But I will restrain a kid. What we're going to do, Mr. Brits is going to give you, you see, it's in there what you have on your book already. He's going to give you a, a detailed way that you can do the physical handling without any repercussions. I guess why? Now, and here's, and here's this other thing. What do we do? Boy in my face calling my mama everything but a child of God. Says he had my sister before he left and came in here. <laughs> he went verbal on me, did he? He ain't touched me, but he went verbal on me. So I'm going to go verbal back. Does that mean I'm going to start calling him names? Nah. Because we trying to do what? Remain what? Professional. Right? Trying to remain professional. And through the process of remaining professional, I'm trying to keep my cool, right? My self-control. Because see, if I don't do that, I ain't going to be verbal no more. Okay? The next step, physical to physical. He get in your chest. He is just violent. Who had that uh, conflict, that non-violent crisis in the class? The brother Hall teaches. We ain't have with somebody, two, three people. Brother Hall, you ain't doing your job, man. <laughs> two, three people. He violated your personal space. Yeah. Okay? When they violate your personal space, that has become physical. He don't have to touch you. He gets in your face. That's too close. I'm sorry. I don't even let, you know, my brother get that close to me unless we finna hug. All right. And the only person I let get that close to me is my woman. And she better be ready to hug. <laughs> <laughs>
we have a disturbance and you have a group disturbance. I think anything more than 10 people is more than just a group disturbance. Okay? But that's my definition. Huh? It's a big group disturbance when it gets past 10 people. Okay. All I'm saying is to you is there are times. If you're in a chapter, you have five units for church, you get a boy that becomes verbal, agitated, don't want to sit down, don't want to do anything. You give him a direct order to move. He does not want to move because, see, he knows that you can't get physical with him if you don't get physical. you got to stay close to Garbage. In that instance. Because he can cause more people to come into the situation than what you need and what you're ready to handle with or deal with. So you have to go verbal to physical. You have to move him. Move him out of the area, contain him, take him out of the population. Then you go back to verbal to verbal, physical to physical. Most of the time, <coughs> once you move them off by themselves, they calm down, they don't give you any hard times, no problems. School area, for those that's in the hallway, boys go in the gym. How many people worked in the school area here yet? Boys going to gym. You got all these units going to gym. You got all the boys in the hallway. Two boys get into an argument right there in the middle of the floor. Or boy, or teacher sends a boy out and says, go upstairs. And we say, he's going upstairs. The boy stands in the hallway, clenches his fist. I ain't going upstairs. I ain't going. You can't make me go. What do you do? Somebody give me the answer. What do you do? Come on now. Yeah, somebody knows something now. Right. What do you do? Find out why you don't want to go upstairs. Find out why you don't want to go upstairs. Well, that's one good reason. You physically move them. You physically move them. But I mean, but you didn't, first of all, you got to find out why he, why he don't want to go. Okay. You went verbal, which is the way he did. He asked. Why you don't want to go upstairs, son? Teacher took my pencil. And my mama brought me that pencil for visiting. <clears throat> You're going to probably look at me. <coughs> what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> all this over a pencil? Well, see, they hear all the crazy stuff. Don't you? Pencil. He took my, 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 my best book. I wasn't doing nothing but just looking. <laughs> <laughs> she sent me out, want to lock me up because she don't like me. <laughs> she said I was singing. <laughs> yeah, we get it all. But he in the hallway, I ain't going. You tell him to move, I ain't going. I'm going to use her as an example. Little bitty something. <laughs> Boy as big as me, I ain't going. She is, come on son, I ain't going. She just, he, the boy showing out in the hallway, agitated. What do we do? Do we leave him there? <coughs> Next thing, don't ever do anything alone. Anything that you do, you always have a backup. Never do anything alone. When that boy's in that hallway, he does not want to move, and you don't have the time to go from verbal to verbal to physical, physical follow the steps, you got to go from verbal to physical right away. <clears throat> so you got to go. Especially if he's becoming agitated, you're moving these boys to the gym, and all of a sudden his other brothers are, are in there at the game from the same game. He's like, oh, hey, we're going to ride out with him. Y'all hear that? If you ain't heard it, you go here. Oh, no, he ain't going to do that. Let's do it. All of a sudden, that shows the opportunity for them to do something because everybody paying attention to what? Him. <coughs> it's taking you off your game plan. It's not allowing you to be professional. It's not allowing you to do your job. And it's definitely not allowing you to follow proper policies and procedures. You have to move. <coughs> if you don't feel comfortable with moving him by yourself, there are always other tenants stationed in other places that can help you. Normally, no matter how big a kid is, if he gets verbal and don't want to move out of the controlled area into another controlled area, 
because of his attitude. By the time five or six of you guys get over there, he's ready to move. Because the first thing he thinks is that they're going to beat him down. And nobody wants to take a fuck with him, especially not in front of all his friends. Okay? But then, by the time two or three more get over there, he's really got to show out now because now he's got a crowd of people looking at him. But you being professional, you try to neutralize the situation by the very thing he just said, asking what the problem is. And most of the time, they just want to listen. They just want somebody to listen to them. Sometimes I can have a confrontation with another resident. Mr. Hurst, Mr. Brisson, Mr. Smith may see me. They may know this resident a lot better than me. He may listen to them. He may say, oh, I got a person. Come on, sir. And you just walk right along and you say to yourself, why you couldn't do that with me? I didn't do nothing to them. It's just that sometimes they feel comfortable. All right? And then, you know, Mr. Hurst may have been one of the ones back in the day that body slammed him when he was about to hey, <laughs> And now he's like, okay, I respect that. But whatever the case may be, you have to move. But in that instance that you move, you cover your ass. You document, document, document at all times. Yes. I think that's that's the biggest area for me is my concern is not so much the kid. If, if, if I was there with the kid, I'm not I'm not worried that the kid is going to really attack me. Mm -hmm. I'm not, and it doesn't bother me so much that he's swearing and all and call, calling me all these names. But it's the effect it has on the unit, everybody else. When that's you feel, when you feel, and it's your call, not administration's call, because you're on the front line. Supervisors have no idea what's going on until they get there. <laughs> Case workers have no idea that what's going on until they get there. And definitely, just the door don't have no idea what's going on because they ain't on the floor. He ain't gonna get there. Okay. And he's definitely not going to get there. But he's telling the truth. Yeah, please. Raise your hand. Yeah, be there. <laughs> the only people that are there are you and me. We're there. We have to make that decision, we have to make that call. Okay? It's up to them to how they say it, shoot them up, lay them out, let them sort them out. When they <coughs> Your job is to let them sort it out as it's over. You felt <coughs> that this kid was in the TV room, been disruptive, and that he's going to get other kids into the mold. You had to move him out, put him in his room. But when you do all that, you document You cover yourself. Case workers come up and say, why you put him in the room? Well, here's the report. He wouldn't be quiet. There's no talking to every da 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 Boom, boom, boom. All the case workers say, okay, how long you want to keep him in there? Some of them should ask you that, but they don't. Well, I will leave him in there to the mom. Okay? We leave him in there to the mom. All right, that may be fine. But sometimes he may have a problem that you don't know if you don't get verbal with him. You must get verbal with these two. You have to. That's the only way you're going to know what's going on. The only way. But, is it real? You know what? It's free. It's been tied back there a long time. But they don't know each other. He's been gone a long time. Time for them to get to know each other. Time for them to get to see that they can work together. And that's each other. Didn't think it was going to get free this it's free. Mm -hmm. Now the policies and the procedures can work together. The left hand and the right hand both know what's going on now. So I should have never let y'all eat. See, because y'all getting real hefty. You're going to tell the oh, folks, yeah. he, boy, they get sleepy, man. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, that stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's why. And you protect yourself by documenting. <coughs> documenting everything. And you know, you probably get some people on the unit and they document everything in the book. The boy went to the washroom. The boy did this. The boy did that. And you probably say, goodness gracious, why is he writing every little bitty thing in the book? And the case worker probably comes up and says, why do you write this big old long report and all the boy did was kick a chair? Well, that's good to do all that. <coughs> to write all that stuff. It means you're just a sucker for detail. Okay? That way, there's no questions to be asked. The case worker can't ask you nothing. She can look at the report and go, all right. And then ask the kid, did you do this? Well, I ain't no idea at all that. <laughs> but, you know, it happens. 
but he spit in my face. He spit in my face, and I didn't have time to go to the other two. I went straight to the gusto. I had to move him, get him contained. Okay, I had to get him contained. And after I contained him, I documented it, I documented it, and I documented it, and there are no questions to be asked. Yes? All right, question now. Uh, this is the situation is the same as you just said. You didn't have time to go through the verbal part. Sometimes you can, you know, the kid might have a problem that you need, that he just needs someone to listen to. So uh, let's say you couldn't get to the verbal part. You had to go straight to the physical, and you put him in a the room. Then usually what I used to do is every time I could find somebody, I always go back and talk to them whether or not, you know, that's not going to change us. They still go do their time or whatever. But then until that a situation happened with me, they asked me why did I open the resident's door. Okay. They said you shouldn't open the door only to, you know, shower and feed them and whatever. Now, so, you talking to the resident after you locked them in. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're supposed to have this newfangled console that I didn't get a chance to listen to that presentation on the console. We haven't had that yet, right? Oh, okay. I'm going to tell you, the console I got don't work. Brand new. You're supposed to be able to punch the button and talk to the, all the residents in the room. Sometimes, on a personal basis, you may feel that you need to just go talk to this kid after a few minutes to pass. <coughs> Now they say, well, why did you open the door? I'm sorry, I think it's kind of impersonal talking through the door. If I'm going to talk to this resident, I'm going to open the door and talk to him. No, who was that saying? That's you saying that. Okay. I'm going to open the door and talk to him. I know, but that's you saying that. I'm saying you moved him out of, uh, out of an environment, not the environment that he's in. If he's already in a controlled environment and he's going, he's going ballistic, he can do that by himself. We're talking about when other residents are around. <coughs> this is when you have to move him. This is when you become physical. Now, if a resident's in a room and he is throwing himself into the wall, trying to jump off the little toilet thing in the room, you can't. You still can't allow that. You have to still become take it from the verb to stop doing that. He don't want to stop. You didn't, that's your verb. Stop. Now, what a whole sentence. You told him, stop doing that. He's still banging on the door, wanna taking his head, trying to hit the, the window. Anybody work 5G? <laughs> oh, tell me about them little kids. <laughs> I ain't going in that room. I hate the room. They, they, they flood the toilet. They doing all kinds of stuff. That's my second watch. See, I know. <laughs> we just had that incident, didn't we? We didn't have time to get verbal with that kid. What I do, sir? Stop that. He saw us coming. He moved from the door, and he sat on the floor, and he just started crying. I want a case worker. They love case workers on 5G. <laughs> I want a case worker. And all they need is that case worker to come in there and tell them, well, you know you locked up because you did such and such a thing. Well, I just wanted to hear you say it. <laughs> That's exactly what they do. <laughs> That's exactly what they do. And the tenant going, not that. They can't handle being locked up and talked to by the same person. No. They can't handle that. All they want to do is see the case work come there with some concern, and then he'll flush his toilet, stop flooding the room, you know, stop kicking on the door, all that good stuff. Unless he's mad with her. Okay? But all I'm saying is that there's a point where you have to become physical right away. You don't have time go through any song and dance. Now, that does not say that these two other phases I deleted. There's certain situations that maintain <coughs> the security, the safety, and the welfare of all the residents in this building. Your mission statement says safety, welfare, and security. That's what it says. <laughs> Safety, welfare, and security in the world. <laughs> welfare is just like caring. Because we all sin, right? Yeah. All right? Care, 
welfare, safety, and security. It's the mission statement. Okay? And that's what it's about. Professional, self-control. Don't take it personal. Don't take it personal. Right now, Mr. Briggs is going to come to you on the use of force. And during that, all the other uh, questions that you had or that you have concerns about are going to be asked. Because of the use of force, you spoke mechanical distress. I know we're tired of hearing what we can't do, but I'll tell you what we can do. Well. What I want to do this is we'll cover the uh, policies on this course of procedures, and I'll give you two short quizzes to ensure me and yourself that you understand them. I'll need participation from you all. I'll call you, and we'll read it, and I'll tell you what it really means. Mr. Brown, please. Read that? Yes. Use the physical force policy. The Cook County Juvenile Temporary Detention Center has a policy and procedure that limits the use of physical force to instances of self-protection, protection of the juvenile or others, prevention of property damage, prevention of escape, and in accordance with appropriate statutory authority. And to, re to reiterate, you can use force in terms of self-protection, protection of a juvenile or others, protection prevention of property damage, prevention of escapes, and the code of appropriate statutory authority, which means uh, <coughs> the state gives the judge uh, authority to give us the authority to attend to the children here. Are there any questions on this? Feel free at any time to stop me or ask me any questions. Here's a very important one. In no event is physical force justified as punishment. I think Mr. Percy used a prime example of when a resident should spit in your face. That gives us no reason to beat him, stump him, or whatever. also is very important. There's been some times when people have used force and didn't make a report at all, wrote a report two days later, needed to say there were severe consequences for their actions. Whenever force is used, the report should prepare to to the facility administrator and doesn't even let them to the conclusion of the duty. I mean, at the end of your duty. Any questions on that? This is the American Correctional Association's policies and procedures on physical handling. You know, I got a question about the report. Um, mm -hmm. Because you know, sometimes they come and ask you to write more than one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, when it you. comes to writing another report, <laughs> you know, uh, do they have to like tell us exactly what's going on, who is this for, and why, or we just gotta, you know, just sometimes write? Sometimes people's reports can be very vague. Not enough information. If they're hiding something, they won't come out and say it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you make a report, come back again, say another one, come back again, they mm -hmm. tell you something. Right, then what? 
Okay, now, you know, they made me do this one time, and then they had me do it, just said, look, just write this one on regular paper, mm -hmm. no, you know, yellow or nothing. And so, like, you know, I was a little hesitant to do that, because then I'm one that's just official, but it's not on your stationery or whatnot. Now, what do we do in instances like that? I, for one, uh, never heard of that. Well, it happened to me. Really? Especially if it's a long report to yeah, but I'm oh, saying. Well, based on your request, um, I'm filing this on a, <coughs> on a legal pad. You know, put, document that on a piece of paper if you're uncomfortable with it. Yeah, but I mean, since they keep pushing this policy and procedure, is that policy and procedure for us to do it not on official stationery? And then, I mean, what are they doing with it? They don't tell it. They just tell us to do it. Because it, it, that, it what, what is happening is they're conducting it for part of the investigation. As we were talking yesterday, when you have an incident, it may be the supervisor who will write an incident report, uh, and that incident report may be based on your violation report. Now, when the investigation begins, they may, at that time, at that time, incorporate that that paper that you're writing in that investigation package. You understand? Yeah. Okay. And that. Uh, and that becomes it becomes an official document. But if you the question that you're asking is that is policy and procedure, it is policy and procedure that you do not insubordinate yourself. Okay. I guess it question it wasn't explained. The ball? The boy. <laughs> Nobody yeah. hears your child. So it seems to me like that supervisor will be he or she always made you feel Oh, it happened to me personally. Yeah. Well, I had not not with with the report right now. I had any questions. Supervisors and they got kind of defensive, thinking that I was trying to be smart, or, and I was trying to be—I was trying to get some information, right. you know. And uh, I told them that I was like, no, "I'm not trying to be smart, mm -hmm. you know. I'm—I'm I'm trying to correct my ignorance. I want to know, you know, why you have me do this, you know, right. what you have a right to." Right. Right. But you don't know what you're doing while you're doing it. You don't need the right answer. Go online. Mr. Mayor, would you take this please? Can you move on? <coughs> See. According to the ACA sample policies and procedures for juvenile detention facilities, physical handling, physical handling, the first level of force available to, staff to a staff member is the use of his or her hand. Physical handling is justified to subdue unruly juveniles, separate participants in the fight, and in defending self, staff, juveniles, or, the, or to the person. It also, okay. It also may be used to move juvenile to move a juvenile who fails to comply with lawful orders. As with any type of force, the amount of physical handling used shall be only as much as reasonable and necessary under the circumstances. Once again, the physical handling is justified to subdue an unruly juvenile, separate participants in the fight, and defending yourself. Other staff, <coughs> other juveniles, or other persons. You can also move the juvenile who fails to comply with the lawful orders. With any type of force, question. With any type of force, the physical handling is usual shall be only as much as reasonable and necessary. Let's talk about that. Yeah, we're going to get you're not trying to punish the rest of it. You know, you're not trying to take his arm and twist it all the way back. But you simply just want to move him or restrain him or her. Everybody follow that? No comments. You said restrain him or her. We don't have to restrain no birds at any time, do we? Oh, yes, we do. Sometimes you may restrain women too, girls. Yeah, but I mean, all they gotta do is look at you and say that you fondle them and you're gone. Well, <coughs> most of the time when it, when it does, right it's right 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, look what happened in Lawrence. That's true. Look what happened in Lawrence. But he wasn't supposed to go there, though. He said he did. 
I know, I, I threw a couple of fights. That ain't what he put on there before. If you have to restrain a girl, don't do it alone, then you right. got witnesses. I'm you going to be able to do it most of the time. Right. Uh, there's going to be a lot of There's quite a few attendants there anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There will be a female somewhere around. Right. Female attendant. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Use of, uh, use of physical force, policy, procedure. Use of force is prohibited. This prohib prohibition. prohibition in no way prohibits self-defense. Prevention of injury to another staff member or you. Prevention of property damage. Subduing a record of what is it? Or preventing an escape or attempt to escape. What they're saying here is, uh, Mr. Fultz is prohibited. Which means they really don't want you to use it. But there are times when it will be necessary. When those times come to life, you can, you can use it for self defense, visual injury to another staff member or you. Prevention of property damage, and so doing a recalcitrant, which is a uh, resident who is unwilling or uncooperative to uh, cause his procedure. And to prevent an escape or attempt to escape. Any questions on that? see a lot of the <coughs> is redundant. Well, I'll cover this one. When use of force is authorized, only the least force necessary under the circumstances shall be employed. Which means that you're breaking up the fight, this is no time to get your pot shot in and the resident will be getting on your nerves. You <laughs> <laughs> simply just want to break the fight up. You know, we're not here to, you know, you may have some explaining to do. He has an injury. Give her a body. <laughs> well, if they have injury, you know, you're just breaking the fight up. They got hurt in the fight. Yeah, but it's tough when uh, that resident says, You hit him. <laughs> and the energy while I'm shooting on that station and they corroborate his or her story, you may lose some money, some time. You may get yourself fired. <clears throat> Mr. Williams, please. The use of physical force policy procedure. Whenever force is used, the detailed written report shall be made and submitted to the facility administrator or designee. Fully documenting what kind of force, how much force was used, why and whether the injuries are to staff or juvenile. This report is to be submitted no later than the conclusion of the tour of duty. To concur. Whenever force is used, if detailed written report shall be made and submitted to the facility administrator or designate, meaning your floor manager most of the time, fully document what kind of force, how much force was used, why and whether the injuries are to staff or juveniles. This report is submitted later than if you look to a duty. Not it's Friday. I'm tired, I'm, I'm making money when I come back. No. Could I say something? Sure. I don't want to get in your class, but one of the things I just want to mention to everybody, all of what he's saying is real good, but if you do encounter a kid or you break up a fight or somebody's injured, one of the things that they didn't mention there is you right away see that that kid go to the dispensary. That way you cover yourself, you're not going to be worried about coming back tomorrow and they said he was hurt. You see that that kid get to the dispensary after that fight that he was involved in or after you broke up a fight that you possibly could say that you did something. If that kid is in the dispensary and that's been documented, then you're going to look a lot better. That's very important. Okay. Another point of the same matter is in your report, if you ask the kid if he wants to go to the dispensary, the kid says, no, I'm all right, I'm fine, 
you know, I just got a little lump on my head, but it's all right. You sent them anyway. Send them anyway and write it on that report. If the kid refuses to go, write it on the report and he refused he refused medical attention. That way the next day when he get, he wakes up and his eyes purple, you offered it to him, you wrote it on the report. Before we go on to mechanical restraint, we'll take a short quiz on Mr. Fultz. <coughs> a quiz? <laughs> 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 Mr. Robert, will you take question number one, please? If a resident is attacking your co-worker, you should do nothing because you support is prohibited. That's false. That's true. You support is prohibited, but uh, when your co-worker is being attacked, you can't use force. Wait, wait. You say what now? I say you support is prohibited, but there are some certain instances which you can use force. That's one of them. That is one of them. Okay. So that makes that false. Yes. <laughs> when a resident has been acting up all day and you have talked to him or her several times, you should take him in the washroom where nobody can see him, and you teach him, teach him a lesson. You know what? Come on, think about that one, Jernigan. Uh, Mr. Britt, I have the wrong one. I have the probably the next one. This is for mechanical restraints. I'm sorry. So I just I already filled out. I'll just keep it. When the use of force, when the use of force is authorized, you should make a good showing to the other residents by really putting it on the residents so to teach them a lesson that you are not to be played with. False. <coughs> when you use force on a resident, the report you make on the incident must be turned in no later than the end of your shift. That's true. That's too much correct. If we're now going to uh, use of force on the counter of the terrain. Boom, you out of here. Because you're trying to get out. Well, 
already might be waiting out. You got to remember that that report you make out is legal document. You don't put down your stuff that's necessary, who, why, when, what, and where. You might regret that because you haven't put the information. You don't know how big that's going to get. That might be, that little fight there might spread out and be a whole big thing. I mean, it could be a big game. It could be a family. It could be anything. And you haven't put in all the information that's necessary. Take your time and put in what's necessary in that report. Uh, I've had, not recently, but in the past, I've had reports sent back up by co-worker, administration by co-worker and say, hey, Thurman, show this guy how to make this report out. Because he's going to lose his job if he turns it in like this. He got one sentence down there over something that might have took 15 minutes. You know, the guys might have had their respect dragged in and everything else. So make sure you get everything in when you write those reports. <coughs> All juvenile temporary detention center group service staff. Purpose to describe when and how mechanical restraints are used. Is this a new one or an old one? What's that? This is a new one. Mr. Hightower, this is a force of mechanical restraint. Policy that CDC staff use. Mechanical restraints to ensure the safety and security of staff and residents inside the facility and the community outside the facility. We use restraints inside the facility when the resident becomes hostile or violent. He's they, have, they have you. you want to some, he or she is sometimes restrained to the his or her room. Why don't we keep uh, restraints on sex? Um, I'm going to get to that. Outside of the facility, we use the strength to take the heel of her court. We've been tapes. I've seen the same nature. kicks it again. This time he kicks it and it cracked out. <clears throat> now you have an escalated situation, but you have still documented it, documented it, and documented it. Okay? He comes out that glass. I'm going to give you a scenario. He picks up a chair. Do you stand there and let him pick up that chair? When that glass breaks, you better be over there at that door. Or you better be on the phone calling somebody that the kids that came through the glass. Okay? Now, when a kid comes through the glass, you still got to document it. Now you got to document he came through the glass. He didn't get cut. He got no shoes on. He got all, he got, now you got paperwork, paperwork, paperwork. And 50 million people going to ask questions because now you're going to get the floor supervisor going to ask you, the floor manager's going to ask you what happened, and you're going to have to keep saying the same story all over again. So it's just documented. And then you're going to have to talk to that man right there. <laughs> Because he run it off. I know, but I, I was... Okay, but all I'm saying, and, and that's the answer to your question. The question is, 
There is no absolute way out. That's why she said life goes on. But you got to document. And going back to what I said, your thing is... Under which we make decisions. Apply the same standards. Apply the same standards. Okay, I'm because fine. Because can I finish? Because many cases, uh, uh, we might make a decision, and we don't make the right decision. We're all human, but we get all this heat from whoever it may be. However, but it doesn't seem ethical. It doesn't seem right to just say, okay, we'll pass the buck. Okay, for sure. no. okay, then if, you, if you're going to give the uh, supervisor mm -hmm. a break about good and bad calls, then you want the supervisor to give you a break about good and bad calls. It just seems like that should, that should just okay. be normal. Mutual that should respect. be expected. Right. I agree. I think I agree. I agree. And we established that earlier on today, that there are some things we need from supervisors, and there are some things that supervisors need from us. But, you know... What I'm hearing is that we're all pissed off because the way we get treated, and, and you know they come down with an attitude. So everybody in the building's running around upset, and now whose problems are solved? <coughs> you know. That's the one thing I don't want to get away. Mr. Person, well, when he got on the documentation thing, you know, if you document, 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 like you said, what you're doing, and you make your decision, you have a free hand to make your decision. Just to be able to justify your decision. Just say, I decided to let this kid out to get a shower at this particular time of day. It's something I don't normally do because these are my reasons, A, B, and C, and D. It was advantageous for me to do it at this time. So just document whatever you're doing up there, write it out in your book and make a report on it, and have the justification for why you did it, and you and one night you won't get the heat. You know, that, that you get for when you just make a decision off the top of your head and uh, you leave it to chance. <coughs> and, and, and the gentleman over here said, uh, when I called the supervisor and he said, you know, you want him to restrain him, uh, if you put in your report or put in your log book, I mean, when you call him, you can tell the supervisor, look, I'm making a report out on this kid because he's banging up, he's been banging for an hour, and I'm going to put in here, you know, what's yeah. been going on. Yeah, well, you right. usually get him yeah. well, that was on, on the restraint thing, you know, I know we don't like, like to be over the values to run up there and, and tie a kid down with handcuffs and shot. Now the kid is like right in the process of tearing the room down. And you imagine, you can get, get a hold of a case from the supervisor and they come up there and see this kid attempting to come through the glass. Sure, I'm not going to attend, they probably will do it. But the kid's already come through it. And and now 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 you're depending on the calm down from kind of way. There's no point in shacking the kid down if he's already come through the thing. Or there's no point in shacking the kid down because of what he was doing five minutes ago if he stopped. I'm saying the kid is right in the process of doing something you can't get him to stop. Hurting himself, destroying property, fine, but I don't think we advocate <coughs> physical restraint. It's not punishment. Yeah, right. Have, yeah, right. We don't advocate physical restraint because of you pissed off at Well, like you were saying, that, that was like, at that particular time, it was like the third report. I had written, he, he had one when he went in the room, <coughs> and he had another one uh, <coughs> he while he was in the room because he continued to be disruptive. He had another one he got while at lunchtime to we'll try to feed him and do a play on the floor. So, I mean, it had been, like I said, it was progressive. It had been an all day thing with this resident. And it was just, this, you just pushing up on 2.30, <coughs> 3 o'clock in the evening, and he's still clapping. 
for practice. I've never seen a kid being shackled hit the door. Now, I've seen them tearing the ceiling out and all that because they couldn't get him to stop. But just kicking the door, first of all, the doors weren't supposed to be that easy to break. You know, they figure he's going to wear out before the door wears out. Take his socks off the next time. She walked around the session. I disagree with that last one. The front door is out on my face. Door <laughs> door. Oh, yeah. But, that's, but, but that's because the, the, the manufacturing of the door is not where it should be. But that you <coughs> still cannot always shackle a kid <coughs> for banging on the door. Okay? Now, we have had incidents where you have shackled a kid for banging on the door, which was what we had two weeks ago or a week ago. Okay, but this kid was tr really trying to come through the door. That's a, that, that's a call, but it was the call was made by a supervisor. He made that decision. Okay, and we were just just to assist. But my thing is that you know, and I understand because most of the time supervisors are on the session, we're speaking to them over the phone, and you know, kid ain't stupid. These kids ain't you know. They're slick. They see you pick up the telephone. They know you either call in a case or a supervisor. They're going to stop what they're doing while you're on that telephone. Okay. okay. How, how are you to know whether or not this child is, is literally trying to or not? If he's kicking that door extremely see, hard, that's, to me, it there's seems only, like there's, only, kick there's the only one way I know a kid is trying to come through the door, and I'm told to be honest with you. I have never seen a kid that wanted to come through that door that didn't come through. When he get ready to come through that door, he comes through. Shoes and socks and nothing. He comes through the door. But that's just like if somebody puts their hand to you. Do you wait for them to hit you to know that they're going to hit you? you know, no, you, you don't. You wait for them to stand. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I was I was Okay. All he's trying to say, all he's telling you is that we don't make that call. Right. Okay. Right. We, don't, we don't make that call. They not, if they, they don't come to the session. That's why you document Right, they don't, they don't come to the session to see what's happening. That's you know, not, that's not your the fault. disturbance is not only what's happening. When we were first hired, I remember in our first orientation, we were told, you know, we had a whole line of supervisors. Oh, my name is such and such, whatever. If there's ever a situation that you cannot handle and that you feel is becoming uncontrollable, call us. That's okay. Wait a minute. That's what we are here for. We will respond. Okay. Now, nine times out of ten, you call, or I should say nine times out of ten, hasn't happened that often to me, but. You know, when I first started, I had a situation that seemed uncontrollable to me, all right? The kid was kicking the door, it seemed to me that it was about to bust it, and the other kids were getting buck wild. You know, yelling gang stuff, you know, to send it up, this and that. I called the supervisor, said, nah, all right, well, ain't nothing you can do, just let him kick. Okay. Just let it be. Now, that upset you? Well, it upset me because it at the time, job it 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 right. <laughs> at the time, at the time, and I expressed this to the supervisor, I felt that the situation was, I could not handle the situation at that present time. And I expressed this to that supervisor. And I think <coughs> if it happened to me, and it wasn't that long ago, I've only been here 11 months, I'm certain this still happens and it will continue to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't, there's an idea that, you know, just handle it however you can. Just handle it. Or let it go. You know, and then, we are human. When we, you know, some of these people might get to the point where it's sick, but I can't take this no more. Pump out the door and go, Okay, has anyone in this room ever been told that if you call a supervisor for an incident and they don't respond, that you can report the supervisor? Does Absolutely not. That? No. Oh, okay. Okay. If you call a supervisor for a problem, you know, that if the supervisor doesn't respond to your satisfaction, that's what I mean is if he gets slowed you off on the telephone, then you can report it. Then you're being a dog house with that super. No, but, well, you don't talk no, but to see, oh, remember, remember you asked the question. Remember you asked the question earlier. How do I know what questions to ask? Seems like that's what y'all were heading. Y'all want to tell them that super. Right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, what are you talking about? Seems to me. No, I think if you, if you, if you, if you can do that, if you can do that and be handled in a professional manner and not brought back against you, I would have no problem with that. Because well, I think that people should do that to me too. Yeah, yeah. It's being handled in a professional manner. I, I want to hear if a supervisor, you call a supervisor. The overwhelming feeling is that it doesn't get handled in an open and honest manner. When you just promise to work, they promise you to work. I have to hear if a is not performing your satisfactory as far as responding to the call, I would want you to report, give it to me in writing, to me personally in writing, what happened and who the supervisor was, you know, 
and I guarantee it'll be handled greatly. If I have to use Myra to go to go with the plane. You know, I mean, I can't say that you. Just to cover your end, right? So she can say that you're being protected. Never be on the training course. Not that you're necessarily. Let me understand you correctly. Are you are you saying that if the, if there's a complaint against a supervisor that is given to you in writing, mm -hmm. and if that if that uh, if if that staff is being reprised because of the report, <coughs> because they're reporting on a supervisor, if that supervisor comes after the report, then you would know that it, after that report that that. Okay, we're having problems with okay, 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 what happened is, just say if Mr. Laureano gave me a report and somebody asked you, didn't respond to something or nothing. Then what I try to do is get the report, go over with Mr. Laureano myself, and make some type of determination if this thing needs to go any further. Mm -hmm. if, if I need to have that talk to you, if it needs to go to Mr. Davis, if it can be worked out, if it's just a misunderstanding. I would probably be the mediator mm -hmm. from step one to keep it from going, if it needs to go to ask you. But it goes to the next step, but can't be worked out. But I need to know. Because it could have been just the way you interpreted it, or it could have been the way right. he interpreted it. So well, we be not, but we all, know, we all know that for certain that this, this happened. You know? I, 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 oh, I, know, I know it happened. You know it happened. I know, I, I know and, it happened. And, if, and that's without going out and writing a supervisor up. But so that, could you imagine what the repercussion would be of going out? So, you, so you wouldn't be writing a supervisor up. You would just be reporting to me the incident that happened. That's what I'm referring and, and, and to. And That's who, what I'm who was involved. Right. I think a lot of the problems would, would be uh, avoided <coughs> if we could uh, just speak about situations. Instead of necessarily having to have a write-up, you know, if I could have a third party while I talk to the supervisor about <laughs> Look at the situation, but that doesn't seem to happen. You well, know? The, Look, well, the reason, reason I say that, that because I can get it and I can read it and I can kind of sort it out. Maybe we don't need it, maybe we do. Then that would be rather than just jumping up. Grabbing an ask you saying, right. and Laurie, he's going to get super defensive right. about his situation. You're going to be pissed because you're going to think the supervisor's getting advantage and nothing to be. Then he'll be then you think he'll be out. Well, you know something, and when we talk about being old professional, there's something that when you come along with that, it's called a gentleman's call. If you have a problem with another supervisor or another attendant or something, the first thing is you guys should try to talk with each other. <laughs> If the super, you, so you didn't get the response from the supervisor that you think you should have got. You should be able to pull that supervisor up and say, excuse me, you know, can I talk to you? you know, because I felt like you know, I didn't get any support from you on this situation. <coughs> Especially if you're a new jack and you don't understand. That comes with the territory. Okay? That fear of not, being able, of not knowing if you can handle that situation or not. Okay? But if you just hold on a little while, I'm here to tell you, you can deal with the situation. In any situation that comes about, you can deal with it. And that's, and that's good because it just may be a misunderstanding. If you do what Mr. Person said, even before, before you do the stuff I was talking about.